something. I don't really care what defense I'm looking at. Here, it looks like we have a cover two. The A route probably would have been open as well, but you can see this route, it's getting open at 40 to 45 yards. There is no zone drop that you can set to 40 yards, which is one of the reasons this is one of the glitchiest routes in the game. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable mutt coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shots. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always, got a new run play for you guys today. If you guys have been following my weekly videos, I've been saying that I'm going to be dipping into a lot of alternate playbooks this week to try to find some of the better hidden gems in those playbooks. Because if you guys don't know, the best plays, the glitches plays, are typically in alternate playbooks. They typically don't have them in custom playbooks. You typically got to dig pretty deep in the playbooks that nobody uses. And that's exactly what I did today and found one of the best run plays in the game. Now, I'm using the Cardinals, but I'm in the run and gun alternate playbook. The formation I'm in is in the Gun Trips TE a pretty common formation. I think you can find these in like the Patriots and the Bills and stuff like that. None of the plays I'm going to show you today are in those particular playbooks though. Now as far as the play goes, the reason I'm making this video is because of this play right here, the speed option. I love option plays. You guys have seen me put out a ton of option plays. This one here might be the best and it's mostly because it's one of the glitchier ones when it comes to the actual pitch animations you get, which is very key when it comes to uh, these type of plays. Now you have a typical inside zone, uh, a halfback counter, which isn't very common. This is also a very good play and you also have have an RPO zone alert bubble if you like to run bubble plays. It's going to be very similar to the inside zone. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick uh, the first play, which is going to be the speed option. On the defensive side, we're just going to go with random 3-4. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsor, AOH.com. If you guys want to get your Mutt team up and support the channel at the same time, all you have to do is check them out. Link in the description below is your discount code money. You get 3% off whatever products you buy. They also sell uh, 2K stuff, FIFA stuff, uh, whatever sports games you like, Rocket League. They have something for everything. So if you're playing these games a little bit more and you're playing Madden right now, check them out and use discount code money. You'll get 3% off whatever you buy on their site. Now, as far as this play goes, what really makes this play good, like I said, is the pitch animation. A a lot of plays don't really have a lot of success when it comes to pitches. But you can see right there, a lot of plays, you don't get that pitch out once that contact is made. On this play, you do. And it's a ridiculous pitch animation. The pitch animation is a glitch. This is not an animation where the ball should leave the quarterback's hands. He's either going to wrap it up or fumble. The guy's basically enveloping the arm in which the pitch is going to come from. Somehow he pitches it through the guy's body. This is what I'm talking about right here. He goes hand through the dude's body and pitches that ball anyway, which is exactly what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. Like This is one of the glitchiest pitch animations you're going to get in the game. You're always going to get that pitch out. You're never going to get fumbles. It's, it's just super glitchy. And then, to make this even better, look how far the, bar, the ball travels. The ball travels at least 10 yards to get out to the running back. You actually have to slow down and come back to it. But that's really what makes this play so good. You'll always get the pitch animations. It's super consistent. It doesn't really fumble. And you also are always going to get these you know, amazing pitch animations, which is always going to get you out with nothing but space to run to the sideline. And what really makes this play kick up a notch is the fact that you can flip it. That's right. Most pitch plays like this, especially out of shotguns, you really can't flip it. This play, you can. You can flip it to the left with the right stick. Just hit the right stick to the left, and you can flip it in either direction. Uh, and this is going to basically kick it up a whole nother level. Now, you can run any way you want. You don't have to run with this play. If you see opportunity up the field, you can just take it, which is something that all these pitch plays typically have the option for. But in my opinion, this play might be even better flipped. Now, now here, obviously, I'm not going to flip it based off the fact that there's no cornerback outside. This is pretty much the simplest read you can make. If there's no cornerback outside here containing, this is going to be typically when you get rid of that. And then, boom, you can see that pitch is just so dirty. I don't have a really fast running back, or I probably could have been like up the sideline for like 20 yards there. Because once again, you can see this flip is disgusting. Once again, terrible animation. There's no way that ball should get out. He pitches it through the defender while being tackled. No matter what, that pitch is going to get out. And then you can see this ball travels like 15 yards away 
to the running back. But like I said, if I had like a super fast guy, I'd have been up the sideline there for a touchdown easy. So anytime you have a play like this where there's no quarterback outside, this is just easy money. He's got, you're going to get that flip out. Look at that. That's like a 20 yard flip. I mean, that's just insane. You can see how successful this play can be. Now, like I was saying here, you know, you got, I got, they're giving me a lot of Y gaps. I thought I picked random three, four. I'm not really getting that. So you could easily just take this with a mobile quarterback right in those gaps. You don't have to basically run to the running back. And at any point in time, if you want to flip this play, you can do that. The quarterback really becomes the running back in this situation, but you still have the pitch option to get that ball out. And then you can see right here, I mean, the, the defenders weren't ready for that at all. Get another 10 yards going the other way. I mean, average about 10 yards of carry every single time. So here we got a stack box. This is going to be a perfect opportunity to just take this wide right here. They're sending the house. Like I said, that pitch animation when the running back gets turned around slows them down a little bit, but you can see how explosive this play can be. Now, there's some really good running plays going in the opposite direction. Most importantly, the inside zone. I don't need to go over this too much, but you'll see how a lot of times, I mean, you know, if your opponent's paying attention to this formation and you're flipping it out wide and you're running it out wide a lot, the inside zone will eat a lot of times, and especially based off of this. I mean, I'm basically in a matching nickel package here. Because of the three wide receivers, a lot of times the linebacker will be out in front of the receiver, just giving you a huge inside zone lane. And then, like I said, you can have that exact same effect with the RPO bubble if you just basically want to hand it off to the bubble. I find the inside zone is definitely better blocking. You can see right there the receiver didn't get off onto the linebacker. But if you're in like a cover three or something like that, the RPO zone alert bubble is going to be a much better option to give you a little pass, a little more trickery outside here. So like I said, you have the ability to really attack both sides in unique ways. Uh, but if you see something like this where the linebackers pull, it's best going to be just to go to the inside zone because you can see the receiver actually steps up and blocks uh, the linebacker, which you don't get from the, the RPO alert because basically, you know, he's going out in a pattern. So it's really up to you. But that puts the, uh, you know, anytime you see a zone coverage, you're going to be able to put your opponent in that type of quandary. And then last but not least, you got a really good counter run here, which is something that, you know, will catch your opponent off guard a lot. Uh, as you can see, I mean, this is something that, once again, they're all attacking wide in one direction or the other. As far as the pass plays go, I might show two today, but I'm not really sure. The one that I know I'm going to show, though, is going to be the halfback swing. This play right here, like I said, it's a one-play touchdown against every single defense in the game. So let's go ahead and start off by picking that. But before we do, I'm just going to make sure that I have my fastest receiver in this spot, not necessarily my best receiver, although realistically, it would work the same way with uh, DeAndre Hopkins. He's just a little bit overpowered because of his route running and stuff like that. So I'd much rather have a lesser and faster receiver. Other than that, let's go ahead and let's pick the play one more time. Like I said, I can do a whole breakdown of this offense. If you guys want to see that, hit the like button in the comment section. But the play is going to be the halfback swing. On the defensive side, we're just going to start off with cover two like we always do and work our way back. Now, I'm going to run a lot of these plays from the hash mark, either uh, the, the to the open side of the field or the short side of the field. But ultimately, it really doesn't matter. You can run these plays from anywhere. It just makes sense to run it from the short side because you'll see that it takes the receiver a lot longer to cross the field. The receiver is going to be attacking because of how these receivers are so spread out. So if you run it from like the open side of the field, it's going to take longer for the play to happen. You'll see that when I when I condense this, uh, when I move this over, you'll see how condensed the receiver package is. You can see here it's a lot closer together, which means it's going to cross the field a lot faster. So as far as the setup goes, I'm just going to put the Y route here on a streak or on a fade. It doesn't really matter. Matter, block my tight end, block my running back, and then put the B route here on a slant. Now that slant's gonna be a solid check down if you guess wrong, on you know if you don't guess the right defense. Uh, you can also put him in a drag, but against cover two, it's kind of important to put him on a slant. And then you're gonna see if I can just buy time in the pocket, which should be too pretty easy considering how much blocking I gave myself. We're gonna have a wide open receiver coming across the two safeties. Now that there, I probably could have threw it a little bit sooner or even a little bit later, but you can see how this receiver gets across. Once he breaks that uh, that zone chuck there, once he's about here, I could throw it at any point in time for an easy catch and run. Now, like I said, I could also hold it and wait till he gets you know f further across the field because you can see he's past the other safety. The, the other safety just completely lags off to, and covers nobody. So ultimately, it's really my choice. This guy's open pretty much the entire time. We'll go and do that one more time. And we're going to see how we're going to have, you know, pretty much the exact same results. Like I said, the X route there, I could throw this at any point in time. It's really up to me how much of a catch and run I want to make. But you can see it's wide open. That'll have the exact same effect against cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that again and we'll continue with cover two man. Exact same setup as cover two. Just going to do the, you know, the slant and the... Um, the streak combination that's all i really have to do so now you're going to see how once again this b route here just gets really gone this time i mean i don't know why uh he gets he gets open even easier against cover two man than he did against cover two zone because he was way ahead of the receiver but we'll do that one more time like i said mostly just blocking 
uh, that's pretty much the, the majority of the adjustment here. As you can see, that X route is wide open again as he's just he just gets behind both safeties at this point. Now against cover three, it is pretty much the same setup, and you just have to put the B route on a streak instead of the Y route. That's pretty much it. And they put the Y route on a slant. I'll block my running back again. The A route actually does a pretty good job of pulling that cover three cornerback too, so I'm going to leave him alone. And you can see how we have a very easy one play touchdown over the top against cover three. Now I threw that ball a little bit late, but you can see it was wide open. Like I was saying, this particular route is one of the better routes in the game at pulling this cornerback to a point where he almost comes to a match because there's nothing over here. If there was somebody else over here, it'd be a different story. But since he's the only receiver, he's going to pull that cornerback far away from his deep third responsibility. And at that point, you're just waiting for this receiver to cross over the top. And you can see he's like 20. 20, 30 yards away. There's no way he's going to catch up to this. This play is really all about the pass lead. That's going to probably be the most important part of this play. Is you have to get a pretty dramatic pass lead to this X route. The more dramatic, the better. As you can see there, we get much better separation from the cover three cornerback. Now, cover three pre-snap looks a lot like cover one man. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to pick that next. We're going to match with cover one hole. Now, this here, I can attack multiple ways, but I find the best way is to motion this guy across and put the A route on a streak. This is probably going to be the best setup. Uh, you can put your A and your Y route on zigs, uh, but the B route really is the better route when it comes to attacking man coverage for uh, a one-play touchdown. As you can see right there, he actually got bumped off the route and still made the play, but that route does better against man than the other one does. If you look at the B route and the X route, they really run similar looking routes, but there's a different break point. There's a different angle at which the B route takes, and that makes it a better man beater. It's really that simple. That signifies a better man beating route so putting the a route on a streak to pull back that cover one safety uh, and then putting the x and the y in a combination of drags and slants is really going to be your best option as far as check downs really up to you uh, but the b route you can see I mean, he just cooks this particular defender and he's a very easy one play touchdown against pretty much any man coverage as long as there's no safety over the top you'll see if i do that on the other side if i just run this play as is um, the Y route or the X route a lot of times doesn't really get the runner's route. You can see that they really converge on that. So you really can't go that route. If you have a fast enough speed advantage, you can, but it's really better to do it this other way. Another good option is the, the A route's actually a pretty good man beater if you have a, a fast enough tight end. A lot of times he can get outside of man coverages, so you lose that as well. But there's a lot of man options. It's just that if you want the one play touchdown, the easiest one is to motion this guy across and then just make sure you don't have any deep uh, routes. To get in the way and you'll see how this b route will just get across the formation a lot easier like i said it looks like he's going to run that route then he just gets out in front of it and we have a very easy catch and run one play touchdown against cover one or cover zero so next up we got cover four uh we'll start off with cover four match and then we'll work our way back to cover regular so we're going to go with cover four quarters to start so we're going to highlight that route one more time we're going to make that motion across like i said this is the man beating route this is the best one of the better man beating routes on the play i mean obviously earth is a good man beating route as well but that's the best one play touchdown man beating route so then we're just going to put the rb route on a curl and the y route on a curl and put the x route here on a comeback this is all we really have to do you're going to see how the x route now is pretty much going to just be wide open after a certain point although their pressure made me throw it a little bit early but you can see he's absolutely cooking this cornerback and if you watch the confusion that this route concept creates, I mean, you can see that this cornerback doesn't even know if that's his responsibility until he's already getting cooked. This setup is probably the best um, where you give yourself a 10-yard uh, a out route on the Y route because if you do that, the running back actually can stay back and block even though running backs aren't necessarily the best blockers, um, it's still an additional blocking back. So if I do it like this, uh, we'll have a lot of success where this, this route will still get open and there won't be any safeties over the top of the there. I have the running back blocking and I still probably got the most pressure out of any of the plays that I played there. And then last but not least, we have cover four regular. So we'll go and pick that. To get the cover four regular, we'll have to go into our dime package, 146, and go down to cover four drop. Now, cover four is very different than most defenses where you actually want to run it from the hash mark to the short side of the field. All you have to do for this set is block that tight end one more time, put the Y route on a streak and the B route on a drag, and this is going to be a one-play touchdown against cover four. Pretty easy one at that. As you'll see, this X route, once he crosses that safety, he's well behind the strong safety. By that, I mean the free safety. If we go to the replay, this is all about timing. Once he gets inside of this free safety, you bullet pass lead away, which is basically in the direction to the right. You can see he's well beyond the strong safety. The strong safety will have no chance of flipping his hips and getting into his back pedal. But he doesn't have to be past the free safety. He just has to be inside of the free safety. Once he gets inside of the free safety, you can see him already loading up bullet 
pass leading inside, and we have a very easy one play touchdown against cover four. It's another play that the pass lead is super critical. If you want to have the A route on a drag too for another check down, you can always do that. I don't think you really need it. I mean, the Y route actually does a pretty good job. You need the running back too. That's something I didn't really mention. Like in some other plays, you don't need the running back, but in this play, to create that effect, you need that curl route or that swing route. Now, there is a slew of really good plays in this particular formation. One of my favorites is probably the verticals. The verticals play is something that is really hard to cover no matter what particular defense you're in so we're going to pick that on the defensive side we're just going to go back to nickel but this time we're going to pick random nickel 335 so this play here all i'm going to do against pretty much any defense is put the a route on the streak and put the y route on a drag that's all i really have to do the drag is the check down i like the running back on the comeback route although realistically i can put him on an actual comeback route like here he's on like a check and release which means it's not guaranteed he's going to run it but doing it like this Pretty much the B route and the A route are going to go open against just about every single defense. Now the B route here, this looks like, I don't know what that was, but you can see by the time the ball's in the air, he's 40 yards down the field. There is no zone drop that you can set to 40 yards, which is one of the reasons this is one of the glitchiest routes in the game. This plate has a great share of successful checkdowns with the Y route and the RB route running back. Uh, like I said, I like the actual curl. I, I think that that timing wise is just a little bit better. But ultimately, this play is really all about this B route. As you can see right here, this is a man zero blitz. That's an absolute destroyer of man coverages. And since it gets open past 40 yards, it's going to beat any zone coverage as well. So we're going to do that one more time. Like I said, this is something I don't really care what defense I'm looking at. Here, it looks like we have a cover two. The A route probably would have been open as well. But you can see this route, it's getting open at 40 to 45 yards. No zone drop depth is going to be back there. Now, if you want extra blocking, you can get it with the running back, but you can't sacrifice the tight end. Here we got another man coverage. Like I said, we're just going to absolutely cook any man coverage and any zone coverage. Threw that a little bit early, but I mean, the pressure was getting there. So ultimately, any man or zone that route is going to destroy, which is why I like this particular play. Here it looks like the A route is an option as well, but like I said, I'm always going to go here. That's a 45-yard route by the time the ball is completed. No zone drop is going to stop that. This is actually a very successful one-play touchdown against cover four as well, which I didn't really... Um, the last one-play touchdown against, against cover four was a good play, but this one's even better. So we're going to go ahead and pick that. We're going to show cover four drop. This route absolutely glitches out cover four uh, regular. For what reason? I don't know. All you have to do is block the tight end. That's all you got to do. And watch how this B route just runs right behind the corner cornerback like he doesn't think it's his responsibility as you can see I mean it's a really easy completion over what's essentially a prevent defense in cover four they said I've highlighted this in a lot of different videos I don't know why this route reacts this way or why the cornerback rather reacts this way but he doesn't drop back the same way he doesn't think it's his responsibility I think on this particular play it has a lot to do with the fact that I do have a short route underneath to the running back which I think probably does more to keep that player down but like I said, this round's just a glitch when it comes to cover four, and it's a glitch against most defenses as well. So if that play, like I said, beats any man or zone, it's especially good against cover four. We have a lot of really good plays that go in the opposite direction as well. The best one is probably the PA slot corner. This is another play you can run against just about any single defense in the game. So let's go and let's pick that. On the defensive side, we're going to continue to go random. This play to me is all about the B route. Whether you want to put the Y route on a streak or whether you want to sacrifice the drag, it's really up to you. I would say the drag makes the most sense because I can always drag my tight end. This is pretty much going to be the play. The B route is pretty much going to get open against just about every single defense in the game, especially like that would look like a cover three. The cornerback's getting pulled back by the streak. The Y route is really one of the things that clears the play, so that's why I like to keep it there, because like I said, right, you can see that the Y route basically freezes that defender. I don't even have to know what defense this is. This particular route is going to get open against just about every single defense in the game, man or zone. So this is something where, like I said, I don't have to have a great you know ability to read a defense. I just know that that route's going to be there all game long. It's something that's going the opposite direction from most of the plays I've run today. So that's something that's going to be very easy for, you know, my, my opponent will probably forget about it. Here it looks like it was like a cover four quarters or something like that. The safety had no chance. Like I said, that route, it's one of the better routes in the game. This particular route that I've been highlighting as far as how it beats man, now with this setup it easily beats zone. You can see the safety's waiting there to pick that up. But there's just nothing that he can do about it. He just covers it very poorly. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more from this playbook, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section, and I'll do that. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.